So I guess I'll say some things about uh, level curves and gradients and flow lines and such. So, um, so my favorite example of a function is elevation function that gives the elevation of a point. So here, I imagine I have a point, uh, a function f of x y, which gives the elevation at, at every point x y. So for this room, the elevation would probably be something like 500, and it would just be flat everywhere. Um, but for a nice mountain range, something like this, something interesting happens. Um, so here in this picture, you're supposed to have two mountains where the elevation is quite high, and then it goes down into a ravine here, and it kind of slopes downward over here. That's the idea. I could have made it going up on this side, but I decided it's going down because these are mountains. So um, at a level curve, as if you are walking along a level curve, then your elevation isn't changing. So it would be like if you're taking a break on your hike, you might walk along a level curve. On the other hand, um, if you want to just, if you're standing here, for example, and you want to walk to the, like you just want to climb. You're like, I want to get this thing done. I want to go up. You'd want to go perpendicular to a level curve. So if you want to go up, you'd go perpendicular. Um, and it turns out that's the direction of the gradient. So the gradient um, is the direction of greatest increase of the function. Um, and so it's going to be perpendicular to the level curve. Um, and I hope that makes sense. If you're standing at a point on a steep slope and you're like, I'm ready, let's go. You just hike directly up the slope. On the other hand, if you want to take a break, you walk perpendicular to that direction and you wouldn't increase at all. So that's the direction of the gradient. So for any of these, if you want to have the direction of the gradient, it has to go perpendicular to a level curve. So perpendicular, well, there's two ways it could be perpendicular, to the left here or to the right, but it's the increasing direction. So you have to actually look at the labels on the curves here to see which way is up, which way is up, which way is up, that way is up. OK, so that's our gradient vectors. And then if you want a flow line, let me get a color you can see. So a flow line is like, let's, let's follow the direction of the gradient at every single point. So I don't mean like draw in a gradient vector and jump to the end of it and then recompute. I mean at every single point, you're recomputing where you're going to go. So you, could do, you can imagine doing this if you have a hillside, like a parish beach or something. You're, you can just, at every point, you just try to go as steeply as you can. So for this, if we were hiking up the mountain, we'd try to go as steeply as we could, and that is always going to end up being perpendicular to the level curves. So I want to drive. That one didn't go so well. That one's not so perpendicular. Let me fix it here. So I'm probably going to have to drive out like this a little bit so I can come in perpendicular. Those are supposed to be perpendicular. Um, it is awfully hard to make things perpendicular. And what I suggest is that if you have a problem, like I'm having, you draw in extra level curves that sort of smoothly um, get you from one to the other. And then if you're trying to drive perpendicular to everything, it just helps you, oh, I see, that was my problem. I was going the wrong way. Um, it helps you to stay perpendicular to everything if you have some intermediary ones. So when you're going up the hill, you can imagine it's like you're hiking and you're trying to uh, go hike as steeply as possible, get to the top as quickly as possible. Let's do it. Um, and then on the other hand, you can imagine that you have, that you are a raindrop. And you have fallen on the top of the mountain uh, here. And you, let's say, let's do, let's do this one. You're a raindrop and you've fallen here and you want to get to the ocean as quickly as possible. That's what raindrops do. They follow gravity. So you would actually go in the opposite direction of the gradient. Because the opposite direction of the gradient is the direction of steep uh, descent. So you'd want to go backwards in such a way that you're always perpendicular. Um, and so that is not so bad. We just keep going. This one goes off the page. I want to talk about this one a little bit. Um, this one I, I kind of copied from, the, from your picture. It's in the top middle of your diagram. Some of you took this, I'm going to go perpendicular to the gradient thing really uh, uh, seriously. And you just said, I'll just drive it straight across. Boom. Those are, all, those are all for sure perpendicular to the level curves. 
But here's the problem. Here, our, our, if we started our raindrop right here, it would be going down the mountain, down the mountain, down the mountain, down the mountain, down the mountain. And then it gets to the, this valley, this ravine, and suddenly it starts going up the mountain. <laughs> yeah, uh, magic raindrop. So that is not what's going to happen. I mean, the problem there is that it was so steep that you didn't have all the level curves you needed. So you can put in extra level curves if you want, going in here to help you. Um, and what you would do, maybe you can see, I mean, is that you would end up going that way. Something like that. So, so just be careful with it not going uphill. Um, and then, what would it mean if one of these flow lines went in a, in a closed loop? So if a flow line went in a closed loop, it would mean like your raindrop was flowing downhill forever in the same circle. That doesn't really make sense. It would mean, if going the other way, it would mean that if you hike in a circle, you'd go up and 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 up. It's like a spiral staircase or something on the same little piece of mountain. So it doesn't really make sense that a flow line would be in a circle, and that would sort of imply that the curl of your gradient could be non-zero, because it would mean that you can follow gradient vectors and come back to where you started. It's not, it's not exactly, um, as, as this group pointed out, you can have a vector field, which they've drawn over the, well, I drew it, but they told me what to draw. Um, a vector field where the, there's, the flow lines are never a closed loop, and yet the curl is non-zero. But you can think of it as meaning if the curl was non-zero, then you could go in a circle, um, your flow line could go in a circle. So that can't happen with a gradient vector field.